Welcome back to Section 3 with Whittling with Salty. Last time we were working on carving this cylinder in a cage, and we were just be beginning to finish up with carving the first post on the first side. So we've carved our way through, and we will begin to round off this post, and again we will make a little stop cut on each end, and carefully make a few shavings. Be sure to follow the grain of the wood so that it doesn't split on you all the way down. And you're working back and forth from side to side. So you get about halfway around. Then you do the same thing on the on the other two corners. Work your way from side to side till you're about halfway around. You see, we start to getting a nice round, round looking post. And we would do the same thing over here on the, on the other inside edge. And you will notice that the, the, the grain will change as you go from one position to another. So it's always important to pay attention to which way the grain is running so that you don't split the wood in the uh, ruined part of your carving. Now the inside corner will leave until the very last because that way if you bump up against it with your knife blade as you're carving the cylinder inside, uh, you would not uh, ruin your outside of your carving. As you're carving inside here, uh, Using, using kind of the front edge of your knife, you're going to have to make very, very small shavings. This takes time. That's the best thing I can tell you, you know, is that carefully, carefully make small shavings and work your way around if you don't, if you don't have to go too far against the grain, uh, you can work your way up, and then switch around from from one side to the other, so that you can finish off. It's it's a matter of carefully working. Here we have it down a little ways. Here you can see there's a little bit of a hump. We don't have it down. It comes, it's not round. It comes up to a kind of a peak. So we have to be careful. And you can shave a little bit off by going crossways if, if you're very careful. Little bitty cuts. You don't want to cut your fingers. We have to be careful that you're not cutting where you're going to be slipping and hitting, hurting yourself. As I mentioned once before, this is white pine. I like to carve white pine. Other woods that are easy to carve are butternut. Aspen is fairly easy to carve. Uh, basswood is preferred by many carvers. It does, does not show any grain, and it's fairly easy to work with. It depends sometimes on what type of basswood you get. The best comes from northern grown basswood. It's more dense. The southern basswood that grows around here is apt to be quite coarse grained, 
And it's easy to carve, but it doesn't hold the detail quite as well. So you can't make fine stuff. So that's the way that you work inside of your cylinder to, to carve the cylinder. But it's important for us also to begin working on carving our chain links. That's what's really uh, the heart of the matter. This is what we want to have. We want to wind up with something that looks like this. Now I have a couple of chain links that are car that are loose and the others are, are still fastened together. That's so I can show you how that works. First of all, we have to lay them out. We have to make a pattern and we want to split that size of the wood into three. The reason that I use a stick here that is an inch, one and one eighth inches in size, is that it's easy to split one and one eighth inches into three, three eighths inch pieces. Three eighths and three eighths is six eighths and another three eighths is nine eighths. That's one and one eighth inches. You can use any size wood that you want. I've known carvers who have carved chain links out of four by four timbers. Well, that's, that's a lot of work, but the fellow that did that had a special reason for doing it. You can take your ruler and measure, or you can use a pencil and split it. I prefer that you make patterns, and you will need a couple patterns, one just for a straight link, and one that looks like a chain link. Actually, you don't need the, the whole link, but you need to make something that looks like that. Uh, if you had, take your pattern that you used to begin with, your circle pattern, that should be the same size as your stick. And if you lay that on the, on the edge of your cardboard or your t little board and draw a circle right at the corner, now if you overlap that just a little bit, say, now here's a good place to use your ruler. Make a mark two inches long and put your pattern there so that the chain links or the so circles overlap just a little bit at the center. Now then you just draw a line straight across and you have the outside pattern of a chain link. Just like that. Now if you want, you can estimate, you know, about five eighths, five sixteenths of an inch, and you could draw the inside of your chain link. Not absolutely necessary because the first thing you're going to do is cut that off anyway. But if it, if it will help you visualize, make something like that, cut it out, and then on your stick, we will measure, measure these out. I start off, well, we'll use our stop mark here, or about a quarter of an inch or a little more lay a chain link down, your pattern, mark it along the edges. Now move it down and skip about a quarter of an inch or about oh, five sixteenths of an inch, something in that neighborhood. Leave a, leave a gap there and mark another pattern and then do the same thing again. Mark another pattern. Then you take a, another little pattern that's the same thickness as your chain link and the same length. 
two inches. And you lay that right in the center. I made a little pencil mark right in the center of my, so I, so I would know where it was. And between the spots where you marked the chain links here and here, put my center mark right in the center of that and mark on both sides all the way around. That's where the other chain link is going to be that faces in the other direction. And you do that again down here. And then on the end, you would put your pencil mark on the stop mark and again mark that off because this will only be a half a link and that'll be fastened on. Now you would turn your stick completely over and mark those patterns exactly the same way. Start at the end of the stop mark, mark, skip at quarter of an inch or eighth of an inch. It would do well when you're beginning to use your, your pattern to mark that so that you get them exactly the same and mark it again down here. Then with this, with this pattern, again, marking right in the center, mark those off. Now then you will have to use a little square or you can use a, a card. And at the end of at the end of where you mark this pattern, lay your cardboard up against the edge so you get it a square. Make a little pencil mark just at the edge. Lay it up here and make a little pencil mark in the center. Then you know where to put your first chain link. So you would put your first chain link down and mark. Again, use your marker there and mark a second chain link there. And then a half a chain link down here. Then you would turn it completely over and do the same thing. You mark your half a chain link on this end and you don't forget to use your square and, and make a pencil mark so that you get them lined up in the proper position so that you have chain links marked on all four sides of your stick. Now the first thing we're gonna do is take our knife and start to cut those chain links off. Cut, cut the marks off that you have put on there. This is, this is what I mean. Uh, we'll turn that around so that we're facing the same way. You can see where the, where the marks are here. Where the chain links, we've got the half link down here, you know. There we are. So we get our chain links marked one, two, three, one, two, three. And the other chain links are here so that we have to cut the corners away. For purposes of clarity and filming, I marked this with a, with a pen rather than a pencil so that you can easily see how these are laid out. And again, I didn't mark the inside of the chain link because that's not important at this time. Uh, I just marked the outside. And so we will cut away those four corners. As we cut away one corner, then take your chain link pattern, you can either make another one or take the one that you have and uh, clip it in half 
a little less than half. And when you've cut it away, lay that down there so that you can mark the ends again. Mark the end on the stick after you've cut the corner off. Then we know where to make our next cuts because in order to make a chain the, uh, without getting mixed up, the easiest way is to lay it all out ahead of time. When you're cutting these corners off, Again, make a stop cut on each end. I find that it's uh, not too difficult to To do if we, we work on the corner like this. We slice that off down to the center mark that we have. You can see that we're cut right up to this mark and right up to the mark on the, on the other side here. Now the easiest thing that I have, the easiest way that I've found to do this is to make a, a cut, a slicing cut right down the center, somewhere close, it's not critical and then take out little cuts just like we did when we were carving that cylinder in the cage. Only this time we want to wind up with a, with a square. Oh, we'll have to make sure that we keep making our stop cut down here on the end. I were doing this uh, as a project, of course, I would have made this cut all the way, from one end to the other, but for the purposes of illustration here, it's enough to, to do a little bit. Get that down close to close to the center mark. And close to the mark on this side. Now we have a we have enough of a space cleaned out here. So that where we've cut away our our pencil marks, we can redraw them. Here's the here's the half of the link here, and we would have to do the same thing on this side. And 
on this side here. And then we do the same thing over here on this side. And then that's how we, we would. This, this is the chain link that runs the other way. And so we make a stop cut in the center. And and the stop cut down here so we can follow our pencil marker. And there you begin to see how we have wound off the chain link, and we do the same thing down on this end. All of these steps are laid out quite easily in, in the book that I wrote. And if it would be help to you, you might want to get a hold of it, which we'll talk about sometime later. But that's, that's the way then that you begin to lay out your chain links so that we can finish carving and wind up with something like this. We will have to continue that on our next session, but in the meanwhile, always remember to keep your knife sharp, check it often to make sure that it's good, lay it down on your sh sharpening stick, draw it a few times this way, a few times the other way, and on your leather to f do the final polishing that's about all the leather does is do a little final polishing and sometimes you wind up with a little bit of a wire edge and the leather will break that off because it wind, bends it back and forth. But you wind up with a nice, uh, a nice sharp flat edge. So, so we've uh, learned a little bit uh, about uh, doing a chain link. And next time we'll finish up on that and we'll start working on our project, which is the, the real crown and glory, which is the ball in the cage. So welcome to having fun with wood carving. Don't forget uh, to keep your knife sharp. And we will see you when the when we start our next session then.